Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday, the 19th of April today. Now, today I want to primarily focus on this report here from the United States Senate. Uh, it's a 300 page report, 302 pages, I believe, and it's called uh, Muddy Waters. And this is the name of the group from the US Senate looking into the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and they conclude the pandemic most likely was a research related incident in Wuhan. Now there's an abbreviated version of this and a full version and it's uh, very thorough indeed. It's just been released to the press in the last few days dated the 27th of January and uh, there's the introduction and it gives a whole range of material. As I say the whole report runs to 302 pages very comprehensive basically the evidence now is overwhelming that this was a laboratory leak in in wuhan uh, possibly aided and abetted by funding from the united states that would have been conspiracy theory a while back now it's basically as far as we can tell it, it, it is the case this is, seems to be what's happened um Wuhan of Institute of Virology uh, began developing two COVID vaccines in November 19. Rather interesting. So they started developing them then. Um, more information on that in a minute. Um, before the this, this means that SARS coronavirus 2 would have been present at the Wuhan Institute of Virology before the known outbreak of the pandemic. So it is clear now that the Chinese authorities, or at least in Wuhan, how far that went up through the Chinese authoritarian hierarchy we don't know but it's clear that they knew well before it was officially announced theory that COVID-19 jumped from animals to humans in a market no longer deserves the uh, presumption of accuracy so this had been presumed by groups like oh I don't know let me think the World Health Organization they just presumed assumed presumed presumed this uh, based on no evidence whatsoever or essentially no evidence and now it doesn't deserve the presumption of accuracy according to this group and advocates of the natural transmission theory it must must provide clear evidence and this is why i'm convinced this is the case because the chinese authorities who would like to prove that it's a natural uh, spillover event um haven't produced the evidence and i'll looking at some specific evidence that we could be talking about in a minute um, now, um, convincing evidence for their argument must be produced by the people that purport the natural theory. The report says this, but the preponderance, preponderance of information affirms the plausibility of a research-related incident that was likely unintentional, resulting from failures of biosafety containment during vaccine-related research. So there you go. Uh, the irony here is that this was vaccine-related research. And I am convinced, utterly convinced, this was unintentional. If this had been intentional, um, well, it would be an act of war apart from anything else, but it was unintentional because the Chinese don't like to lose face. And the messed up loss of face is not what the Chinese want. This was, this was unintentional. This is just a disastrous accident. But we were looking at some of the things that led to that, if you want to stick around for that. Only one place, only one time. This is the other convincing piece of information to my mind um, that um, normally if there's a natural spillover event, you will get it coming out from animals here and there at different times in different places. This only happened uh, once in one place. Actually, it might be twice, but it was both in the same place, both from the um, both from the same source, maybe two weeks apart. So there you go. Um, I kind of like that muddy waters analogy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting name for the Senate to call their group, but um, perhaps appropriate. Anyway, let's carry on with the uh, reasoning of the group. Um, in short, human errors, mechanical failure, animal bites, animal escapes, and as we'll see, possibly animal sales. Um, inadequate training, insufficient funding, and the pressure... Four results can lead to the escape of virulent pathogens, which could in turn infect animals and humans and lead to the release of the virus from a lab. So um, all sorts of reasons why this could have happened. Now, this let's just put this in a bit of chronology. This follows on from the, uh, the Richard Burr report from uh, last October. F uh, and 
So the, 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 in other words, this is, is the full version of that. This is what we've been waiting for. This is a 302-page report of that uh, interim the report that we looked at, and we did look at it when it was just an interim report. Um, FDI Director Christopher Ray already said most likely resorted from a potential lab leak, leak in Wuhan. So that's the FBI are on board with this Department of Energy. Department of Energy sounds a bit sterile, but... Um, they're actually responsible for 17 uh, biological laboratories, including viral research labs throughout the United States. So they know what they're talking about. And again, they're saying it was most likely to come from a lab leak. We've looked at that before. So this is just an accumulating body of uh, evidence and uh, opinion from the United States. Nothing from my country, of course. Um, a lot of things about the United Kingdom now have just become a complete disgrace, unfortunately. Um, but that's for another video. It's good to see that there are still elements of freedom in the United States that are really searching for the truth of this, despite all the problems in that country. Uh, they do have this uh, free, free, relative freedom of uh, research, which in the United Kingdom, no one's even talking about doing some research in this. Absolutely disgraceful. Or Australia or New Zealand or Canada, it's the United States that are doing this. So congratulations to the Senate committee in the United States for seeking for truth. That's the full report. Uh, that's the summary. Check it out for yourself. Um, epidemiology favours early to mid-October to early November for the emergence of the virus. Chinese officials, um, official position is that COVID-19 outbreak began no earlier than 8th of December 2019. Now clearly incorrect. Clearly incorrect. Why? Well, there was an increase in uh, influenza type of illness accompanied by negative results for influenza in the autumn of uh, 2019. So people seemed to be getting bad influenza, but they were testing negative. It wasn't influenza. It was something else. Statistically, because it's significant up on the five-year period. Eyewitness accounts from the time. Um, media reports from the time. Epidemiological modelling. Additional academic studies. Car parking indicating the hospital was busy. Internet searches, all of these things are indicating October, November 19. So October to November 19 is the origin time of the virus, probably early October. Um, report here by mid-October, this is a direct quote, by mid-October 2019, the dedicated team at the United States Consul General in Wuhan, knew that the city had been struck by what was thought to be an unusually vicious flu season. But of course, it tested negative for flu, so it wasn't influenza, it wasn't flu. The disease got worse in November, with uh, staff getting sick. Several researchers inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick in the autumn of 2019. And this is the another clincher here, with loss of smell and ground glass appearance has been reported ground glass appearance in the x-rays uh, the ground glass appearance is essentially diagnostic for covid and the loss of smell of course is highly characteristic all the time testing negative for influenza um, presence of zoonotic and spillover and the likelihood of an animal origin um, failed animal to human transmission or dead end spillovers now what happens here is quite often not uncommon that a virus will jump from um, animals to humans. For example, bird flu. There's been, I can't remember, about 15 deaths around the world from avian influenza. But it hasn't gone on spreading. But if you look at the birds and you look at the humans, you find the antibodies. You find the virus. This has not happened at all with SARS coronavirus 2. Uh, no, no immunological trail. No end of, uh, no evidence of spillovers. No dead ends that you would get with... Um, Thankfully, there were dead ends with the avine influenza pandemic because that could have been terrible, but it was, at least so far. No serological evidence simply wasn't there. Uh, it would be expected that the environmental samples collected from the wet market that were positive for SARS coronavirus 2 would likely show evidence of animal genetic adaptation. In other words, if these had evolved through animals to make them more transmissible to human, you would have seen that in the genetics of the virus and you simply didn't. It really is the case of the dog that didn't bark in the night, every night of the month, basically. Um, it didn't bark. China CDC analysed 1,380 samples. Um, 
from the environment and from 457 from animals. So lots of samples taken from the environment and from animals. Uh, 73 SARS coronavirus 2 positive environmental samples. So yeah, it was in the environment in the wet market. None of the samples taken from the animals tested positive. None, not one of them. If it was an animal in the wet market, it was never identified. The three living, so what the, so the, the these uh, 73 uh, positive samples from the, from the environment, they're able to culture live virus from three of them and identify its genetics. And three live viruses were sequenced and they were basically very, very similar uh, to uh, human isolates that had already been found in people. So what this indicates is that the virus that was found in the Wuhan wet market went from people to the floor of the wet market, not from animals in the wet market to people. It was genetically essentially identical, indicating that it was people that had coughed those viruses out into the wet market. According to that uh, evidence there, unlikely that the SARS outbreak so un unlike the 2003 SARS outbreak or the H7N1 influenza, China 2013, now these had multiple independent viral introductions in time and place, is what we were saying before. So with that natural spillover event, you get, you get a, a spillover in one place. But because the, the, the um, virus has already formed a reservoir in animals, you get multiple spillovers at different times. You didn't get that with SARS coronavirus too. This was not coming from an animal reservoir because there was only one localised or as we'll see two spillover events probably two events from the, from the Wuhan lab but both from the same place it's nothing like a natural zoonotic uh, epidemiological presentation not like it at all so uh, multiple independent viral introductions in time and place simply didn't happen um in China, no, no infection or positive serological samples of any susceptible animals prior to the recognition of the outbreak. So there was none. It was not found in animals. Um, there was no virus found. There was no antibodies found until afterwards when the virus went from people to animals. Then there was some. But before that, there was none indicating it had gone from animals to people. All these things, it's cumulative. Uh, what about the plausibility of a research-related uh, incident and laboratory-acquired infection? Well, uh, Professor uh, Zuhu of the uh, Academy of Military Medical Sciences um, uh, um, filed a patent for COVID vaccine in February 24th, 2020. And those in the know say that would take at least three, two, two and probably three or more months uh, to get to that stage, to get to the patent filing stage. So they've been working on it since November, may, may, maybe since uh, October 2019, to get it ready for that time. So they were working on the vaccine before, <laughs> before the, the virus came, indicating they knew about it. And uncertainties surround the death of Professor Zhu, who died in spring 2020. So this is the guy that discovered, developed the vaccine, put forward the patent for the vaccine. And uh, this uncertainties quote is direct from the paper. Uncertainties surround his death in the spring of uh, 2020. So why what happened there, we don't know. Um, Wuhan Institute of Virology might have been selling animal laboratories for human consumption. I think this is actually the most likely thing. I think laboratory workers were selling the animals to make an extra few dollars yen whatever the, whatever it is i can't quite remember what they have in china now <laughs> to make some extra money and that's how probably how it got out sloppy corrupt practice i think is the most likely and of course the chinese will never admit to this because that would mean losing face because everyone everyone in china of course is fanatically loyal to the party and would never dream of doing such a thing they can't possibly ever admit that and uh, of course the chinese are happily uh Chinese culture will eat a wide variety of animals. Wuhan Institute of Virology experimenting on palm sieverts and 29 per month were sold at the market. We know that as a, there's evidence for that from the report from the 17 wet market in Wuhan. January 3rd, 2020, uh, a, a professor at the Agricultural University was caught doing just that, selling animals after research for human uh, consumption. 
that doesn't say happened in Wuhan, of course, but it does show that it happened at another place. And this, this is actually a professor. This is someone senior who seems to need a bit of extra cash. Um, researching on animals, which we can question the efficacy of anyway, and then just selling them for food in one of these wretched wet markets. Appalling. Uh, apart from the risk to all of humanity, of course. One of the other headings in the paper here, uh, summation of events leading to the pandemic, Eco Health Alliance with the Wuhan Institute of Virology had put in applications for diffusing the threat of bat coronavirus, <laughs> bat-borne coronaviruses, the diffuse project. The irony of that, of course, is simply uh, immense. And the, the Eco Health Alliance, we know, there was funding from um, United States uh, government sources or, or quasi government sources national institutes of health for example um the united states of course often does allegedly uh, offshore dodgy uh, research and things that couldn't be done in the united states for um, uh, reasons of uh, controls li li legal controls uh, get it done somewhere else where there's not so many legal controls allegedly that could happen. I don't know, of course. Uh, these experiments could create chimeric. So th this is a mixture of two organisms, or humans and a virus. Uh, chimera, of course, is, is a mixture of organisms. SARS-related viruses with a furin cleavage site, uh, unknown in nature. There's this furin cleavage site. I'm not going to go into this now, but this is unknown in nature, and this is what makes the virus particularly transmissible to humans. So it's unknown in nature. At least it was unknown in nature before the pandemic. Doesn't mean to say it wasn't there, of course, but it was never documented, never found. It's almost as if this was put in by gain-of-function research. Wuhan scientists filed 13 patents to improve the biosecurity. So we know the biosecurity was rubbish for lots of reasons in Wuhan Institute of Virology. So they put in, they put in uh, applications to maintain airtight, airtight doors, ways of improving sterilizers, air filters, all sorts of things were wrong with the institution that's known uh, particularly with the centrifuges the report thinks scientists were working with centrifuges that could have sprayed aerosol into the air not good um, pretty obvious potential modality of uh, transmission um, there was compulsory remedial training uh, on november the 19th uh, 2019, Wuhan scientists had to attend mandatory biosecurity training taught by officials from the Chinese Academy of Science. So it looks like the people in uh, the hierarchy in China knew that the uh, the Wuhan Institute was dire, uh, dodgy and they were taking steps to improve things. And the session was followed by remedial bio, biosafety training for Wuhan Institute of Virology researchers. A um, bit like uh, closing the stable door after the horse has bolted, but... Then, uh, then, of course, they didn't realise it would become a pandemic, although they perhaps should have done, because that's what they do. They're virologists. Um, Wuhan uh, offices carried out an emergency airport drill on September the 18th, 2019. Makes you wonder if things were around as early as that. Uh, we don't know. But they carried out this drill uh, on, the, uh, on the airport in Wuhan. China's National People Congress drafted legislations to strengthen the management of laboratories also in September the 18th, 20, well, certainly in September 2019. And the report says the pandemic might have started with two spillover events from the laboratory two weeks apart. This is based on minor genetic differences in early circulating strains suggesting two lineages. So it looked like one strain had been passed from person to person for a couple of weeks longer. So there could have been two separate events potentially from two uh, research animals being uh, unethically uh, sold, potentially. But they think that the virus... So at the very start of the pandemic, when this was first identified, there was two strains, uh, very similar, but both Wuhan strains, of course, but, but uh, slight genetic differences that indicated that one had been around in human transmission for a while and the other hadn't. Therefore, the possibility of two separate uh, events... So mid-October to mid-November 19, Wuhan Institute of Virology collected 20,000 bat and animal samples by 2019. 
but did not disclose all of the viruses. But before 2019, the Wuhan Institute of Virology published sequences in a public database, and this was taken down all of a sudden in September 19. That's what makes me think they knew about it in September 19. So the report goes back as um, uh, October. I will put it back to September because why, why else would they take the, um, the, vi the viral database down that have been up for decades, as we understand it, taken down all of a sudden. So there you go. There's the report. So I've put I've put the um, U.S. Senate. I've put the um, the full report on. I've put the a uh, few commentaries about the report in the links, and I've put the uh, the shortened version of the report there as well. This is so important because we need to know this to prevent the next pandemic. People around the world are tankering with tinkering with viruses that they don't really fully understand. They're adding human bits that testing them in humanized mice uh, till there's another lab leak and another pandemic is inevitable. This has to stop now. That's why this needs to be clearly identified. If we could clearly say that, yes, this definitely came from a lab in China, then that's going to put a lot of onus on other laboratories around the world to seriously get their act together. It is part of the reason that the people labs around the world are not saying, openly discussing and doing experiments to demonstrate that this is a virological lab leak. To illustrate, is it that they don't want to illustrate the fact that viruses do leak from labs, lab, labs, and because if viruses leak from labs, then that might interfere with their own work, their own prestige, their own intellectual curiosity, their own funding. Let's hope that's not the case, that labs around the world are soft peddling on this to prevent stricter legislation of labs around the world. Much better just to let things go along Enjoy a nice lifestyle for a few years. And if you get another pandemic that kills, essentially bills, billions of people in a couple of years' time, then hey-ho, never mind. Governments around the world need to act on this yesterday. Terrible situation. Appalling. And yet, the silence from the UK, New Zealand, Canada, Europe, deafening. Glad to see the United States Senate have the gumption to publish these reports. So thanks to them and thank you to you for watching.